Good afternoon. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to Great Day, Connecticut. Hey, how are you? I'm good. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, it was a rough start this morning, but uh, yeah. it's a beautiful day today. It's yeah. going to be nice, pretty much. Absolutely us. gorgeous yeah. today. 68 degrees with sunny skies. Get out there and enjoy it. Just I'm, watch the show and then head outside. Yes, I'm feeling much better, actually, today. Yesterday was very hard, I think, with the whole time change thing. But yeah. I was exhausted little, all day. But today I feel like, oh, okay, it's normal. A little adjustment. Yeah. A little time. That doesn't really affect me. I go to bed. I still go to bed when I normally get up. Yeah. I slept a little bit extra. I went to bed at 8.46 on Saturday night, which oh, was really so 9.46. Right. You know what I mean? So I went to bed really early last night. I woke up really early this so morning. I went to Max downtown for happy hour. And that was, was really... It was really very good. That's how like, you go to sleep early. You go to happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, don't worry. We have the story about shuttling kids around coming up. Okay? Yeah, while well, I'm I the happy, happy hour. I do happy hour, too. To drive through. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And speaking of children, it is a national, a world adoption day, I should say. Which is just great. I yeah. think this is such a beautiful thing. If you're able to welcome in uh, to your homes and your hearts uh, and a, a child that, you know, might not have an, uh, another alternative, yeah. it would be just a wonderful thing. Yeah. I remember one of the stories I did here for Great Day. It was better then, but on um, an adoption consultant, which I learned so much. It's actually a really difficult process, and so many families are waiting and hoping, and yeah. um, there's so much to learn. But anyway, she was a wonderful consultant who works here in Connecticut. And not just babies. You know, think about the older kids that are yeah. still in need of a home, too. So yeah. that's good. So it brings, it brings a little awareness to the situation. All right. Adrenaline rush or worst nightmare? Worst nightmare ever. I don't know. It could be an adrenaline rush. No, you're not doing this, and I'm not either, so forget <laughs> it. It's a new uh, for if you're an adrenaline junkie, you can now go to a Midtown skyscraper and lean over the open edge. You're more than 1,200 feet above ground. This is. But you're uh, harnessed oh, in. Oh, 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 oh. You, walk you have up to the climb stairs. it. Oh, I, I can't even speak looking at this video. It's called City Climb. It's called Nightmare. But you don't like jump off or anything. It's not like bungee jumping or no, anything. No, I mean you just you're harnessed there. in there. But still, I can't. I can't look at this video. It's making me <laughs> nauseous. Look at this guy. He's nuts. I'm a king of the world. They have levitation pods. They say. <laughs> look at the look at the look at look at them climbing up. This uh -huh. is ludicrous. But you can do it. Yeah, I'm I think it's about 180 it. bucks, and you climb the open you, as you go up the stairs. It's all on the outside. Oh, so just, I would suggest if you're going to do this, don't do it on a windy, cold day. Exactly. <laughs> so maybe you can do it today because it's beautiful out. Oh my! The I, highest I, outdoor sky deck in the Western Hemisphere. That's so you just feel pretty accomplished terrific. if you did it. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm not doing it. Like I survived. The it's like running the marathon. You know, I survived the outside of the building. It's a nightmare. <laughs> All right, four astronauts aboard the SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule. They splashed down. Yes, they came down. They were way higher than that building. Then their but toilet was their toilet working? Their toilet? No, they had to. They had to use the undergarments oh, for the. Oh, these were the undergarment people. Yes. So it was nine a nine hour, hour flight hour home. Flight. Oh. So they did have to use their undergarments, adult okay. diapers, All to right. go back into space because the toilet needs to be fixed. If I would. I wouldn't have had a drink for nine days beforehand, just so I didn't have to use my diaper. But anyway, they touched down. Everything went smoothly. They're back home. There, there was a big round of applause as it touched down. Beautiful, right? It's, and they're it's going, just a sight to be seen. There's another one going up soon um, called Three Crew. So they uh, just needed to wait for good weather. And there was, I said, they said a minor medical issue with one of the astronauts. But they're going to go. Another one's going right back up. Yeah, they're just. It's like every other day now. They just seem to be going up and coming down and going up and coming down. So when they get to the local news anchors, I want to be on it. You will be on it. I'm going to make sure you're on that list. All right, this is a story I really don't understand. So Kara, explain it to me. It's a subscription service, much yeah. like Netflix or anything else. You can have subscription service to Panera, and every time you go in, you get free coffee. So Not you pay because you're paying the subscription service. So, oh, right so you now, pay $8.99 a month and you get all the coffee you want. Right, but right now, if you sign up right now. The service is free till the end of the year, so you're kind of getting like two months free of coffee before you... That's very good. Yeah, it's like a little free trial. Go in yeah. and get as much coffee as you want. And what's to prevent you from canceling it after the two months of free coffee? Well, I don't know. You'd have to read the fine print. Maybe nothing. <laughs> you have to read that the fine the print. That is the whole problem with subscription services, Scott. We forget what we signed up for. Oh, Jamie says you can cancel at any time, but the problem was we don't. So we get excited, we sign up for things, we forgot that we're doing, and then they just show up on the credit card. It's like my twenty. Now there's an app to let you know all the things you're subscribed for, so you can cancel that. <laughs> it's like my twenty dollar car wash. 
Because right, I paid, I paid for, you can go get your car washed every day for $21 a month. I go maybe once a month. So you need so to cancel it's, it. I, it's ridiculous. The, car, the whole point is that you're supposed to go and get your money's worth. You're supposed to go get your money's worth. But like, if you're not, I'm, I'm thinking every other day, but I, I just, I'm not in the, I'm not in the, that's in that why way. subscription services are so popular. Exactly. All right, I got to cancel that. <laughs> All right, how about some Martian ketchup? What are you talking about? They're made about? with tomatoes that were grown in a Mars like environment by Heinz. Seriously. Yeah, they've been working on it. They should have this on the SpaceX flight. They sh certainly should. So Their tomatoes are grown. Astrobiologist, a whole team worked nine months at the Aldrin Space Institute to create these special tomatoes. They went into a special soil, and you too can have this Martian ketchup. Mike Massimino will be the first to taste the final product tomorrow. He's a former NASA astronaut. Astronaut and on the <laughs> astronaut, and he's on the research team. So okay. he's going to get to try the Martian ketchup. Will not be available for purchase. Well, that's very upsetting. Oh, you can't get it. It's you only can't the, get it. Oh, no. I, do you think it's going to taste that different? I don't think so. I like think a it's tomato. A, it's a, it's a tomato to, grown you, in a different spot. You say tomato. I say tomato. <laughs> Let's call the whole thing off. All right, Krispy Kreme has some traditional Thanksgiving flavors. Yeah, for but the these donuts. are good. These aren't like turkey flavored donuts. Yeah, that's gross. That's disgusting. So maybe, you know, if you want to have that for dessert instead of pumpkin pie, you could have the original glazed donut dipped in. Look um, at this. Oh, yeah, yeah. This looks really good. It's dipped in a good. butter tart with sprinkled candy pecans. Mm, look at the Dutch apple pie. Look at the pretzels connecting the donuts, Kara. Isn't that clever? Like some of them look like turkeys. Yeah, they kind of do. But uh, now, pecan I know there's a Krispy Kreme at Mohegan Sun. Yes. I, I don't know that there's any delivery, but like my kids really do think Krispy Kreme is cool. Krispy I, Kreme I wonder donuts if you can have them delivered or you have to go to Mohegan Sun. I think they failed in the coffee department, and that's uh, the people like to get their coffee in the donut shop, and I and don't know if their not, coffee was that great. But I mean, I, I've had them. I know I, you go to Krispy Kreme for donuts. I do love you really the think the donut is that much more amazing than every other donut? It just seems to be lighter and just mm. glazier and delightfuler. Mm. Is that a word? None of those. None of those. <laughs> Lighter was a word. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> Alec Baldwin says production companies should hire police officers to monitor weapon safety on set. But that, That's not, one of his suggestions he's putting out on social media. You know, no, how about we just don't shooting. have real guns? I, I, it surprises me that we have real guns, but apparently that part was common that you do this, but like, how do you not? Why would they ever be loaded? I don't, I don't know. What is this crazy video we're looking at? It's, it's Alec Baldwin. I'm not in the woods. All so. right. He's in Vermont. Okay, very good. Well, anyway, which, uh, we'll see what happens with now, that. <laughs> there's all kinds of support groups. Yeah, there's all kinds. There's Al-Anon. There's Overeaters Anonymous. There's all this. But there is actually a support group for traumatized celebrities, and Carol Baskin is part of it. And she says that she recognized all of the 22 that were in her group except for three. And she said those were probably sports figures because she's not into sports. So apparently, Kara, this is a thing where celebrities get together and commiserate about how, it's, how miserable it is. But they've been traumatized by the trials of fame. And she was invited to join after she became a national pariah on Tiger King. And they said, um, she just confessed, and she said, I have this group of celebrities we meet, and where, where they you... get together, and they talk about what's it like to lead their lives, and she's like, now I know why you go around with dark glasses and scarves, because it's just overwhelming. Do you fly in to the meeting? Where is the meeting? It can't be like in... Maybe, well, it was during the pandemic, so I guess you could meet virtually. Oh, you know, you're absolutely right. That's it could be a virtual, saying, but... virtual meeting. But she said it gave them a place to just, you know, talk to each other. They all could identify what they were going through. Well, good for her. <laughs> She needs all the support. Absolutely. I think that's great. Okay. All right. Iconic hip-hop singer, songwriter, and producer Missy Elliott was honored, uh, honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame yesterday. Here we go. She had a lot of help, too. She had a book. Oh. Yay. How exciting, right? Could you imagine? Yeah, she's considered to be groundbreaking because uh, as a woman in the world of hip-hop, yep. um, she's really been a trailblazer. Unbelievable. First she, female I mean, hip-hop so artist many, to receive the MTV Video Music Awards. So many firsts. Michael Jackson Award. Right? So many firsts uh, for this wonderful, wonderful, uh, wonderful singer. Elliot's milestone solo debut, the 1997 platinum hit Supa Dupa Fly, debuted at number three on the Billboard 200, and it was the highest charting debut for a female rapper at the time. Pretty cool. I yeah. mean, she's a lot of firsts. A lot, a lot of firsts. First. So that's good news. And if you want to catch up on your celebrity news, you can watch People the Show right here on Channel 3 at 7.30. Here's Jeremy with a preview. Jeremy, how are you doing today? It's Tuesday. 
Tonight on People, a revolutionary new project, spaces created by and for those with disabilities. The voice delivering those powerful lyrics is James Ian, whose own experience with disability fuels him. There's this like misconception that we're not cool, we're not sexy, we're not funny, we don't, people don't love us, we don't have all these interpersonal relationships and like this video shows the complete opposite. I teared up when I when I first saw it um, in a joyful in a joyful way. At 15 years old, James was diagnosed with SMA, spinal muscular atrophy, a neuromuscular disease that attacks the voluntary muscles in the body. It made me really want to hide. To be honest, like I became really quiet. I became very antisocial. I didn't go out and do things, and I was just hanging at my in my room all the time by myself. And how it affected his music and how the Spaces Project came to be tonight on People. Very interesting. Very, very.